I, I like that swallow shirt. You say I'm gonna sit right there and write myself a postcard. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, believe it or not, uh, when I was teaching, there was a boy and he didn't know how to boil water because his mommy did everything for it. Uh, Dino is the man who actually taught me how to make toast because I didn't know how to make toast. <laughs> but Dino's version of making toast, do not try this at home, children, because you might not have a home after you. <laughs> this is a toast to my friend here called Toast. Fire! Fire! The house was busily burning down. Quick! Quick, Dino Screech, go fetch the marshmallows. I dashed back into the inferno and emerged long minutes later. My eyebrows ablaze, my nostril hair slightly singed. The fire had greedily gobbled up all the marshmallows for itself. Shit, said Dino, shit, shit, shit. Slapping me about the head with each uttered syllable. I managed to save a loaf of mother's pride, I cried. It'll have to do, sighed um, Dino. <laughs> and so, we met Toast. <laughs> this is called After the Wrap. Built an over-large snowman on your front doorstep and hid behind it. Rang your doorbell until you were annoyed by it. Yes, yes, you flung open the door to be confronted with a snowman telling you he loved you until slowly your heart began to melt. <laughs> uh, we climbed Edward Thomas's hill uh, down in Steep and we started at the bottom and oh, we were dead. There's a picture of me standing by the memorial stone and I'm literally using the stone to hold me up. Janice had to kick me up the last bit because it's so different. <laughs> So this is uh, about Edward Thomas. It's called The Very Thing It Was Required To Be Shown. I like birds more than books. A young Edward Thomas thinks, scribbling it in bad Latin, Latin on the flyleaf of an algebra book. A chaffinch chuckles. Fink, fink, fink. It urges in a regional accent. Mm -hmm. Fringella collibs. Edward addresses it. Shell spink, blue cap. The bird disowns its names, content with being itself and itself only. It looks as if it has just stepped out of the 15th century illuminated manuscript, the Shelburne Missal. A caterpillar skeletizing a leaf. Hmm, breakfast meetings. The year 1893, madly in love with its own sunlight. Never such <coughs> sunlight as this. The window holds the scene as if it were a living painting. The bird behind the glass, poetry in just being. The torture of an algebra class. Quad irat demonstratum. <laughs> this is the only uh, poem I ever wrote in Italian. And we're out in Italy and I thought, well, if I have to write a poem in Italian, I have to find the words I'll write, won't I? So I wrote this terrible poem in Italian and I did what anybody would do. I translated it back into English. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, uh, we were out in the show, I said, uh, what's uh, come of Vienna, Vienna? And that's uh, Chef's surprise. What comes? Comes. So, <laughs> come of Vienna, Vienna. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the sun is preaching her sermon to the town of Priano that clings to the cliffs in wonder. Here in her hand of light and water, she tells the parables of pebbles. One wave waves to another as she walks upon the water. Bells undress time, disrobe her of her hours. Lemons grow big-bellied on branches pregnant with yellow. The juice of the future praying in a church of trees. Here a congregation of butterflies and bees. Grapes dream of being turned into wine. Figs ripen with pleasure. The gods of pagan times survive disguised as statues. I only believing in the religion of a woman's laughter. And even now, as darkness grows upon the rose, it's as if the sunlight never leaves, only changes colour. And the sunlight darkens, only to blossom into the next morning in love with time. Oh. <laughs> uh, books, books. Oh.
the road down here. Um, this is uh, the smell of purple. It was launched in New Delhi of all places. Uh, so I'll read the title poem. My little one ran into me and she basically said this poem and I thought, wow, I didn't know she could think like that. She says she can smell yellow. She says she can smell blue, despite not being able to spell either colour. Yellow smells the same as blue, like a wet kitty drying by the fire. Red smells like mummy when she kisses. Her kisses smell different when she kisses you. Then she smells like flames with little orange tips. Purple is my favourite smell. It smells just like a magic spell. I kiss her goodnight like violet, only lighter, with little flecks of purple scattered here and there. In the morning, Tilly would belt into four o'clock in the morning, belt into our room and jump upon us. We were a mountain of male and female flesh. She would just bomb into the bed and land on very inappropriate parts of your <laughs> female and male anatomy that would cause great pain altogether. <laughs> Dino, have you ever had your uh, left testicle trod upon? No, same. <laughs> Don't talk to me about childbirth. Uh, so we had been to a cocktail party, darling, and <laughs> we were very hangover, and Tilly is still going to come in. She's got no respect of cocktail parties, and she's going to come in the morning and do exactly the same thing. This is called, I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. I Ah, wake, covered in glorious glitter, smelling strongly of PVA glue, sticking to my cheek, very hung over. I'm covered in blue, orange, yellow, red feathers. A bubble recently blown, perched upon my nose. I still have comatose. Tiny bubbles travel amongst my curls, as through a bigger bubble brightly, nestling neatly over my right eye, I observe my tiny daughter purse her lips and kiss more bubbles into being. <coughs> Thinly, I force my lips, still frozen in sleep, to somehow speak. What you do, see? Even my syntax and sentence structure is shot. She smiles sweetly. I'm pretty, you know. <laughs> That's the kind of girl she was. This is called Singing the River. Walking with my uncle was never the ordinary process of perambulation in order to get from point A to point C. We would sing our way west into the field as if to tame it, suit it with song. On Carib down the heat is brown, we'd sing to it. The clouds are dark or ordinarily, the grass listening with its thousand ears. And the field would swoon and fall down to the river at its border, which as it happened was the real life river of the sun. To kiss the slumbering on of we, as if he had summed it into existence. And we would roll ourselves down over and over until we arrived at its dizzy waters dangling our toes in pure song. And now, with a quick uncle wink, let's walk home backwards. <laughs> and backwards home we go, just for the laugh of it, the yes of it. Confusing cows and a few scattered clouds, trees and hedges tiptoeing away from us, the five-bar gate with the sweetest, wildest strawberries at its feet, proclaiming, is it mad or what? And the next day, We'd go walking, eyes closed in the darkness of our own making, to sing its song to the river, the river chuckling over stones to itself. And the next day would be backwards with eyes closed, led along by our own laughter and the odd mystified moo. Farewell, we tell the sleepy river. Farewell, leaving it dreaming in the sunset. Shh, shush, or shut our footsteps. Shh, walking backwards. Then Donald swore, I or I or, he'd part no more. A storm a cree. Shh, shh, shh. Thank you. Oh. Uh, I never forgot my uh, 
my first public uh, poetry performance. It wasn't an original poem, it was a Gerard Manley Hopkins poem. Uh, and I would read anything. I was dyslexic, and in my need to stop being dyslexic, I would read, read, read. Uh, so I'd just gone into secondary school. So this is called Make Words Break From Me Here All Alone. Do you? To Gerard Manley Hopkins, my saviour. Grabbed by my curls, my face forced into the toilet bowl, flushed with laughter, they with great glee pee on me. This the sacred ritual of becoming a first year in secondary. They hang me up to dry on a coke rat. I am an all akimbo, feeble bag of flesh and bones, defenceless nerd. Tut, 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 they tut. Reading Hopkins at your age, I dangle helplessly, a hopeless broken puppet, their brute bullying mastering me, Lord. They tear the wind over, by Christ, from the anthology, stuff pages into my mouth, scatter the precious words in a confetti of hate. I call on Father Hopkins to come to my aid, and he lends me his words. I spit them out. Speak with all the authority of his voice. I cut this morning, morning's minion, kingdom of daylight's dolphin, dappled dawn drawn falcon in his riding. Shh, shh. They try to shush me in case Brother Finbar storms out of his cell like a soutane spider to see such poetry scrawled in a scream upon the air. But I am not for shushing. My heart in hiding stirred for a bird, the achieve of, the mastery of the thing. Shh, shh, they now plead. Hear, buckle, and the fire that breaks from the den, a billion times told lovelier, more dangerous, oh my chevalier. Shh, shh, they beg. But there is now no stopping me. I am so charged with the grandeur of Gerard Manley Hopkins. See, they flee before the glory of his words. I fling phrase after phrase after them. His words chasten them. No wonder of it. Sheer plod makes plough down silly and shine. And blue bleak embers. Oh, my dear. Fall, gash themselves. And kill vermilion. Only one more. Uh, this is a haiku. And it's called Old Dog New Tricks. Uh, it was my daughter's third year of being herself. And we had 40 of her little peers over to prove this fact. And they were all going bananas in the next room. And I thought, my God, what can 40 little girls get up to that to make them? I thought, I better go in there and, and, and stop this. So as I approached the door, my hand went out and the noise cut like a chicada. Just <laughs> and now I was more frightened by the actual silence, absence of noise. And I thought, what the... And before I could get the demotic out, the door opened, hit me in the face, and I got stampeded to death by 40 little girls. And they basically said this haiku to me. <laughs> the dog's in the loo. We was teaching him to pee, and he just fell in. <laughs> Thank you.